Okay guys, so today we are changing the front brake pads and rotors on a 2019 Ford Escape. This is the all-wheel drive version, so it's four-wheel drive. And this is the SE. Not sure if that makes a difference. 99% sure the only thing that matters is if it's all-wheel drive or not. It does have the 1.5 liter four-cylinder, if you're concerned about that. Down here are my new brake pads. Should have all the hardware in with it. And new rotors. I'm not sponsored by them. Uh, so I won't mention the names or anything, which never been sponsored anyway. But I bought those off of Amazon. They were fairly inexpensive. I've always had pretty good luck off of uh, Amazon parts, uh, eBay parts back in the day. I haven't bought those in a while, but Amazon usually does pretty well. Just buy something with a pretty good, uh, pretty good rating on it. Uh, so here's the other tools we're going to need today. Wire brush, pick, or a flathead screwdriver. A pair of pliers. Uh, you'll see it's for the hardware. Uh, this is for some rubber on top of one of our uh, bolts we're going to get to. I have a, uh, a pad ratchet. Sorry, I work in lead mine, so I'm kind of slow. I have a, a pad ratchet here. You don't have to have one of these. You can have a C-clamp. You can push your caliper up against the ground and wedge something up in there. This is just a fancier way to do it. It's only like 10 bucks. I uh, do have, this car's a little dumb. There is a hex seven millimeter socket. I don't know what it's called, but I apparently bought one a long time ago whenever I worked at O'Reilly. Did have to get an adapter here. I'm only gonna use that whenever I torque it down and I will go over torque specs with you all. I have a half inch impact. You can use uh, ratchets or wrenches, whatever you prefer. Um, do have a 17 millimeter. This first socket is actually an 18 millimeter caliper. And then I have a 19 millimeter socket. That'll be for your lug nuts. I have some brake parts lubricant. And I have some anti seize lubricant. Can of brake clean. Now, if you're gonna push out any brake fluid, this vehicle takes dot for break. Also guys, we are going to be using a floor jack and we will be using two jack stands, okay? Make sure there are the appropriate, they have the appropriate ratings for the weight. Go ahead and chalk both, both sides of one of the back wheels at a minimum and go ahead, come inside of the vehicle, mine's a mess. Turn on your parking brake. I don't know if you could hear it engaged there, but there's a red light right there, it shows it's on. That part of the brake locks up your back brakes. Okay, starting out, I'm going to start up here on the passenger side of the vehicle. It doesn't matter. Come down here, there's a front tire right there. If you look on the bottom, most vehicles should have this. There's a lift point. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jack it up in this area with my floor jack. And then I'm going to put the jack stand right there at that, at that lift point. Okay, and you want to do it on that pinch weld. You see that? That gun's hard to do one-handed. That's the pinch weld. All right, weld. you can see here, I jacked it up up here. Like I said, I made sure I was on that pinch weld. I have my jack stand set up right there on that point. Keep in mind how many times you click up your jack stand just to keep everything level. Uh, you want this vehicle to be pretty well level and safe. You're going to be underneath it. All right, guys, just a quick mention here. If you're not using an electric impact ratchet like I am, uh, that Milwaukee right there, or you're using a breaker bar. I know those are uh, torque wrenches, but if you're using a breaker bar, then you need to go ahead and break your lug nuts before you get it jacked up, okay? See how it's spinning? If you go try to break that off, then you're not, you're not gonna be able to unless you put something underneath it and wedge it. So go ahead and at least just break them. Don't loosen them all the way. Just kind of break them loose to where you can get them with a, with a ratchet. Okay, so first thing, I'm here on the passenger side. I'm gonna do both sides at once, actually. We're gonna take off these lug nuts, okay? So again, 19 millimeter socket. Let's go ahead and take these off. All right, last one here. Make sure you have it all the way. Through. We'll go ahead and take them off. Now make sure, if you wanna be successful here, that you are organizing all of your parts out of a walkway, all of them together, okay? If you got a piece of cardboard, you got Ziploc bags, anything. I have lost so many parts and tools over the years that's wasted hours of my life while i'm working so any of any of you first timers here even if you've been doing it for a long time don't forget that keep all your parts in one place
One last piece of advice here before we move on. If your tire is stuck on, if your tire is stuck on your rotor, they're, they're gonna be stuck right here. See here, this one's starting to kind of rust and fuse together. This one wasn't stuck, but if it is, take something and hit right here. Not anything hard that'll bust your tire, obviously. I mean, kick it with your foot, uh, use a mallet, that's what I would use, and just beat it off right here. Beat off on one side, hit the other side, hit that side, hit this side till it comes off. It'll eventually come off. If you have clearance, hit it from the back side out of here. There it is, you saw what I did there? And there you can see the clip. So I went, grabbed it just below that little lip there, and I twisted like this. Twisted down like that to the left. Now the bottom should be pretty caked to come off. See that? All right, so I got in the vehicle, turned the wheel. Now there should be some caps here on the back. So let's go ahead and take a look at these here. We'll go ahead and take off these pins here. So there's a little plastic cap that goes inside of this rubber. All right, you do not take the rubber off. You just take off this cap. Let's go ahead and get that little weird looking uh, socket up in there. It is the seven millimeter socket. I'm using a three eighths ratchet with an adapter. Beautiful. All right, bottom one's out. Let's go ahead and get to this top one. Goodness, there it is. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Don't strip these out, that would suck. Just to show you here, we are pulling these all the way out. They kinda max out just right outside of this rubber. So what I did is I took my pliers here, I reached on the back and I grabbed them right here from the end. That is what it looks like. Mine is bone friggin' dry. So that's what they look like. Remember, keep these somewhere, you will not lose them. That goes for the top and the bottom. I gotta pull that one out. Let's look up in here. That's your rubber boot. You don't want to tear that up. Let's see if it'll come off first. Might just pull right out. Beautiful. Yes, it will. So let's just pull it straight out. Now, if it was seized on there too tight, you reach a flathead screwdriver up in here, get back behind the pad, and you would lever that puppy back, push that caliper in. You'll see the rubber there. Push it in, and this thing will just slide right off. And these pads will probably fall off whenever I pull it out. Now, you'll see that's the backside pad. Here's the outside pad, and you'll see your new ones. This one here, it's got a bracket that goes up in here. And I'm doing this one-handed. All right, so you'll see your new pads will look just like that. This one here, it should pop right. I'll show you here in a moment. First, let's hang up this caliper. So you'll take that caliper hook I told you about. You'll hook it on the inside. Let's see here. Let me get it hung up, and I'll show you yeah. guys. I just pulled that brake pad straight out of that hole straight back put that hook right back on the inside and let me smack the camera this is a brake caliper hook i forgot ahead. to mention this earlier in the tools not required hook that puppy right there right there on my suspension all right guys just a real quick correction these bracket bolts are 18 millimeters okay i even had it over there on the workbench I don't know why I pulled out a 17. That is an 18 millimeter bolt. Let's go ahead and take those out. Beautiful. Pop that out. Try not drop it and mend it all up. Beautiful. So you'll see it come straight out like that. And that's that. Now there should be nothing holding on your rotor. Okay guys, so here is your rotor. We got that bracket off the back, knock this thing loose. This thing is stuck on there, mine is. Seized on the front, take a look. I don't have any screws on the inside holding on. Let's go ahead and beat this thing off with our mallet. I didn't put that in the tool list earlier. I didn't think I'd need it, but let's get her done. Can't really get a good angle on this one-handed. So I'm gonna knock this thing off. Just hit it here, hit it here, 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 anywhere you want. Get it broke loose. And this thing, it's just two pieces of metal touching each other. There's nothing else holding it. All right, so I got her knocked loose. You'll see here, just one-handed. I didn't do anything else except for beat it loose. 
something handy, just pull her off of there. All right, so like I said, we're gonna clean this off. You ain't gotta too, go too crazy with it. Now I'm gonna take a wire brush and scrub in here. And we'll put that anesthesia. Don't worry about getting your studs, okay? Just get this rusted back plate here. Okay. Doesn't have to be anything perfect. Pretty well just trying to get it better than it was. Again, not perfect. Just scrub it off. That's it. All you really need. Now let's take some of this anti seize here. I've got the copper type. I know there's multiple different types. I don't know the exact type you're supposed to use in this, but I don't think I would have bought this stuff or anything else. So let's go ahead. Stir it up real good. Be honest with you. This part here is not required. You don't feel like spending money on anises then don't don't do it i mean this is just making it easier if i even have this car the next time i change these brakes or i have to take off this rotor for any reason keep in mind try not to get any of this on these studs here because you want your studs to be on there pretty tight you don't want it to to not necessarily seize on there all right so we got that coated let's go ahead and put our new rotor on just like the way the old rotor was. All right, so we got the new rotor on. Let's go ahead. We're not tightening this lug nut down. See how we're putting it on? It straighten it out a little bit. It's still moving. That's the way whenever you put on that caliper. See, it wasn't even on there straight. Put on that caliper in the bracket. It'll be on there straight. See that straighter? It's tight just by hand. Don't use any tools on that. Let's go ahead and reverse, put on the bracket, new pads, and the caliper. So let's go ahead and compress this caliper back. Took it off the hanger, laid it down, brake pads out. Now, if you don't have this tool, keep your old brake pad in the bottom here. Take a C-clamp and squeeze it back, or pry it with the old brake pad still in there. So let's go ahead and use my little fancy tool. We are just slowly compressing this back to where our new pads that are much thicker than our older pads will fit back in this caliper. And just keep going until it's pretty well, I'd say that's probably about good. You want it to sit pretty well flat right there. You're not gonna push down that rubber there. Perfect, so I got it stopped here. Let's go ahead and take her off now. Goodness. Tear it up. One handed is not recommended. See, I'm just loosening it now. It's kind of pulled it right out. Perfect. Now you'll see that is flat. Got pieces of that old brake pad on there. I wouldn't ever recommend really taking a wire brush that you don't want to tear up that boot. All right, so let's put our new pads in there. And here are the back pads. That's the old one. That's the new one. They do match. Make sure that you check that. Sometimes part store or you will get it wrong. So let's just pop this puppy in place. Perfect. All right. Now, let's go ahead and put your bracket back on the back, okay? Because then we'll pop that other that other pad up here. Really could have did the bracket. All right, so I just took that wire brush. I wire cleaned out these inside grooves. That's where your pads are going to sit before we even put it back on. Let's go ahead and get your bolts All right, you can see I just popped it up in here. Got them bolts in there by hand. And now once they're in there by hand, you know they're not cross-threaded. Well, that one went in there all the way. No, they're not cross-threaded. You know it's actually screwed in. We'll go ahead and tighten her down. Those caliper bolts are to be torqued down to 139 torque foot pounds. That is foot Before pounds. this shot, just kind of took the impact to it or your wrench or your ratchet. Just kind of got them snug on there. Didn't, didn't run it down hard. Just got them on there. See that? Tighten. Down. Tighten. So they are torqued. Torque spec, 129 pounds. Beautiful. Now what some people do, they'll grease up here in these slots. I used to do that. Hey, I'm going to kind of get away from that because I feel like it kind of gets clogged up and dirty and nasty. I'm just going to leave them like they are here. All right, so next step here, 
Now take this caliper, make sure you're not twisting up your brake line there in the back. Very easily one-handed for me. Surely you'll be a little quicker than me. We're going to slide this puppy on there. All right, guys, mine just slid right on. I just pretty much before I ratchet down until it was done with the caliper. Um, I haven't tightened this thing up yet. It's still loose on here, but mine just popped right in. Just get it nice and straight. Let's go ahead and get these caliper pins back in. Remember the weird, funky-looking ones? Let's go ahead and get those back in. First thing we'll do is let's clean them off and let's apply a new synthetic grease. Right, so I just took a wire brush. Didn't get the threads. I just got that metal outside piece. That's what slides. Took a wire brush. Didn't go insane with it. You don't want to gouge this or anything. Just kind of clean her off. Now let's take some grease and apply it to it as we insert them. All right, so I kind of grease that up with that ceramic brake parts lubricant. Let's go ahead and slide this in there. Don't get it on your threads, okay? Just kind of slide her in there carefully, not to squeeze it all off. I wasn't quite trying to get my finger covered in it. Beautiful. Push her up in there. Again, you'll have two hands, so it might be a little easier for you. Let's go ahead and slide that other one in there as well and get it greased up and slid in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get those hand tightened in there. So you can see it's starting to thread. That's what you're looking for. You just don't want it to come back out. You don't want to cross thread these. Then you'll have to either get new pins or new calipers. So let's go ahead and hand tighten these in. All right, guys, I got them pushed in there by hand. And now we're just tightening these down to hand tight. See, bang. These do have a torque spec as well. And we will torque these down. Okay, guys, same concept as earlier, just a smaller torque wrench. These are going to 21 foot pounds. You see, mine was already pretty close there. Top and bottom, 21 foot pounds. That is torqued. Let's go ahead and get this spring back in the front. All right, guys, after you put in your caliper pins, you will put in your covers. You can see I've already got the job done at this point. But I forgot to do this during the video. Just thought about it after I torqued it down. All right, the way I'm going to go about this, pop it in there in the top. Okay, you see the, don't scratch up your rotor. You can see that I got my clip in there, and I might be able to do this by hand. Probably not, actually. So let's take our pliers here. Pop those right there. Oh. Look at that. She is in there. Make sure they're on there pretty good. They're both even. Yes, they are. Clipped in on the back. Clipped in on the back. So we are good. This spring is good. And this side of brakes is done. Now you'll go ahead and kind of clean off these brakes. Spray it with some brake cleaner. And then let's go ahead and put our tire back on. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and I got my tire back on. Pick it up and rough it out. I did take that other lug off that was in there. You want to do these by hand starting out. You can probably go up, throw them in that socket to make your life a little easier. This is just to prevent you from cross thread. Right, guys, let's make sure that it's on there all the way. At least on their top. I like to go with two sides. See in the back, there's no gap. You can turn it, no gap, not wobbly. It's on there all the way. So let's go ahead and tighten these. I don't know which one we hit last. It's in a star pattern. Didn't get that one on there all the way. That's why you want to make sure it's on there all the way. And then I'm going to go one more time. Perfect. Now, once I'm gonna lower this to the ground, once I get the other side done, I'll be right back. And then I'm going to torque these to 100 foot-pounds again in the star pattern. And then I'll go bang, 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 all the way around. Star pattern, I like to do a quick circle. You're good to go. Okay, guys, final step here. We are gonna go ahead. I brought the jack back over here, put it back where it was at the very start of the video. Jacked it up a little bit, took out the jack stand. Let's go ahead and slowly lower it. Stiff here. Golly, bud. And touching the ground. You don't lower it all the way. Let's take her socket here. And we are going to torque these lug nuts down to 
100 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my adjustments with my half inch torque wrench. And then, yeah, we should be good to go, guys, if you do this to both sides, one moment. Okay, so we'll start out here. I'll be honest with you, I put a three quarter on here. And I think it fits a little better than that 19, what it calls for. Yeah, you see it's still kind of moving a little bit. I'll just go through. It's probably not necessary, but. All right. So this side here is done. After you get all this finished, uh, you need to make sure and pump your brakes up a few times all the way to the floor after you start the vehicle, of course. And then whenever you drive it, you need to drive nice and slow. So looking at my, this is what this rec manufacturer recommends. I'll hold this here for your screenshot. This is what this brand recommends. Honestly, what I used to do is just drive them and you know, do a gentle brake, gradual. So it sounds pretty similar to what I used to do just to make sure that it's actually working. So, yeah, I'll leave that there for you to screenshot if you'd like to. And thank you. Like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment, tell me what I did wrong, tell me what you did better. Uh, any ideas for the next time I do this, because I'm sure I'll be doing this again here in the next 100,000 miles. All right, you guys, have a good day.